normally present in your stomach. This enzyme breaks down medication so that when you take medications, they don't accumulate in the stomach. Now, what happens when you when you take grapefruit, that enzyme stops working and the medication you've been taking builds up and can be toxic. Now this isn't true for uh, a lot of medications, but certain calcium channel blockers and so on. So if you're eating grapefruit, and that includes pink grapefruit, any kind of grapefruit, uh, speak to your doctor. And uh, you, you have to be off medication for three days, not two hours or five hours, because the, the grapefruit uh, can, can have its effect for three days in your stomach. Uh, so check with your doctor on the medicine, obviously, yeah, what you want yeah. to take if you have grapefruit. Yeah, some, I mean, even for statin drugs that lower cholesterol, some you can take with grapefruit, others you can't. And certain heart medicines you can take with grapefruit, and others you can't. But pink grapefruit is no different from any other kind of grapefruit All right. in that respect. You know, uh, maybe mom was right about the dangers of drinking sodas. We know it could uh, cause weight gain, obesity. They also say diabetes. But... Now there's a study that seems to show that having only one can of soda a day can increase your chances of a heart attack. I tell you, Is that true? I have to be perfectly honest with you. I don't understand this study. It made perfect sense that if you were a regular consumer... You know, doctor, let me uh, interrupt you for a second. Because we, we need a house call we need from a house call. <laughs> out of for this study, which has had a wide circulation, and people have been calling me and asking about it, is this, that I think that people who regularly drink sodas, a lot of sodas especially, um, have other risk factors. They may, t they may smoke, they may eat too much, they may not have the right uh, 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 diet. So I can't believe that it's the, let's say that a diet soda can give you a heart attack. So if you are a user, if you, if you drink these, these sodas, Look into your lifestyle, look into your exercise, look into your weight, look into what you're eating. I wouldn't blame the soda as the main cause of it. All right, Aaron. doctor, maybe some of those people who are drinking too much soda aren't eating enough green leafy vegetables. That's I exactly. guess a lot of women aren't, aren't, just aren't doing that, right? Yeah, this is, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about folic acid. You know, I've always said that, you know, you don't need to take extra vitamins if you have a good diet. But women, especially between the ages of 18 and 24, every one of them who is potentially pregnant should have folic acid supplements, at least 400 micrograms a day. The thing about folic acid is that if you become pregnant and have been deficient in folic acid, there is a great risk that your child may be born with neurological or spinal defects. So it's a wise thing. They find that you need at least 400. Um, if, if you, and they found that most women between the ages of 18 and 24 are only taking 130 um, um, uh, milligrams a day. So take 400 micrograms of a folic acid supplement every day. And you can get it, you can get some in, you know, leafy green vegetables, uh, beans, uh, nuts, uh, but you can't depend on that. So get it in the form of a supplement. All right. Uh, very important if uh, you're expecting. Uh, you know, it's going to be bad weather the next few days. It's cold outside. So Catherine Cole wrote us about her husband. He gets numbness in the tongue when the weather turns cold and windy. She writes that my husband has a problem of numbness if he's out for a long period of time, but it subsides when he comes back in. And she wants to know, is that a symptom of poor circulation? What could cause numbness in the tongue? There are many, I'm not talking specifically about her husband, but there are many causes of numbness in the tongue. Uh, a lot of the neurological conditions, people with multiple sclerosis, uh, people uh, with uh, poor circulation, uh, uh, people with uh, developing strokes. But in this particular case, the association of numbness in the tongue in cold weather and associated with other vascular symptoms in the legs suggests to me 
the presence of a condition called Raynaud's disease. In Raynaud's disease, the arteries everywhere go into spasm when they're exposed to cold. Uh, the the fingertips become blue. The uh, if you're if you're barefoot, your toes, uh, your 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 feet become cold. And the same thing happens to the circulation in that supplies the tongue. So what you have to do, there's no, uh, you can't avoid the cold weather, and he should not worry that the numbness in the tongue is a serious indicator of anything. He should try to avoid cold weather. There are certain drugs that we give to people with Raynaud's to dilate the uh, the vascular tree so that they don't have these symptoms. How serious is this? I mean, is it uh, dangerous, really? Let's say if you get Raynaud's in your hands and it's yeah. really cold. No, I don't believe it's dangerous. It's uncomfortable. I'm not aware because it's transient. You get the spasm, you go into a, a warmer weather, and the, and the arteries open up. That's different from, let's say, diabetes, in which there are actual physical blockages in some diabetics in the legs, and they sometimes lead to, uh, to amputation. This is a transient thing. It comes and goes. The minute you warm up, the arteries open up. All right, All Doctor, right. thanks for that one. Some questions now about uh, jaw pain. And there are some reports that osteoporosis meds such as Actinel or Fosamax could be contributing to jawbone problems. But uh, I guess we're now hearing scientists at Harvard did a, did a study that um, casts a little bit of doubt on that one. This is very, very important. I, I reported on this show, and everybody knows, there have been reports that taking these what they call bisphosphonates, Actinel, Fosamax, which postmenopausal women take in order uh, to prevent uh, osteoporosis, that it can affect the uh, jaw, and that they people have been warned before they're going before going to the dentist to tell your dentist because if they're going to extract your teeth you may have jaw necrosis now comes this very definitive study that this is not true actinel and fosamax and the other medications taken orally do not cause any problem with the jaw the ones that are taken intravenously or by injection can do it but not the oral ones. Now, before leaving this subject, I want to mention something that uh, was just reported this week. M some women who take these drugs to prevent osteoporosis a few months after taking them notice muscle aches and pains. There has never been an association made between these medications and muscle aches and pains. And what happens, somebody, let's say, has a high cholesterol. They're taking a statin drug. They develop muscle aches and pains. They stop the statin drug because the statin drugs can do that. Remember this. If you're on Actinel or Fosamax or any of these other anti-osteoporosis pills, and also a statin drug, and you develop muscle aches and pains, it may very well be due to the bisphosphonate, to the actinel or fosamax, and not necessarily the uh, statin drug. That's a very, I'm very important observation. Taken every day over a period of time can decrease lung function. It does so by interfering with the antioxidant uh, properties in the lung. Whatever, I don't want to go into that, but if you are on regular doses, especially high doses of acetaminophen, Tylenol, and you notice that you're short of breath and your pulmonary function tests aren't right and your doctor says there's some problem with the lungs, acetaminophen can be contributing that people who, who uh, drink regularly, moderately, one no more than one or two drinks a day, seem to have less uh, pro fewer problems with the circulation in their legs. And it makes sense. I mean, if, the, if it helps the circulation in the heart and the brain, it's logical that it would help the uh, circulation in the legs. I'm a little concerned about this because although I think these observations are correct, I think overall alcohol has a negative effect on America's health. I think that with the accidents, the drunkenness, the alcoholism, the liver problems, that overall alcohol does more harm than good. But if you are a moderate drinker and enjoy it, you should continue to do so and know that it is in fact taken that way helping you. 
The problem is, if you are not a drinker, if you have not taken wine if you are you, don't start now because you hear